Hej och välkommen till lördagens sändningar från bokmässans internet äh, globala torg. Det globala torget är civilsamhällesorganisationerna inom biståndet som ställer ut tillsammans. Det gör vi varje år på bokmässan i Göteborg och träffar en massa trevliga människor där. I år på grund av pandemin så är vi bara på webben. Eh, idag har vi som tema jämställdhet och vi har också en Sydafrika satsning som ni kommer att få se mer av om ni följer oss i sändningarna. Men nu ska vi titta på ännu ett, ett seminarium om kvinnor, makt och politik eh, före och efter Irans revolution. Eh, och det här arrangeras av den iranska kulturföreningen IKFC. Jag lämnar över till detta. Comparing political power and Iranian women's influential power in pre-revolutionary and post-revolutionary Iran. I would like to thank Olaf Palme Foundation and friends in Sweden for your kind invitation and for raising such an interesting question, which I am trying to have appropriate answers to it. Here is the question. Comparing the political power and Iranian women's influential power in pre- and post-revolutionary Iran. I doubt that despite the entry of the important social media factor into the spheres of political influence, these two historical periods can be easily compared. The situation of the world has gone through a major transformation since 1979, when the Iranian revolution took place to the present day. 41 years later, it has changed for an extent that making a comparative study is almost impossible. Social media has shifted and continues to change the whole comparison situation, but this factor did not exist before the Iranian revolution. It exists today. Social media cannot be ignored and its role in assessing the political weight and influence of Iranian women cannot be forgotten. In pre-revolutionary Iran, macro policies were enacted to reform the laws in favor of women. In that particular era, of course, rights such as the right to vote, the right to enter the parliament and membership in the cabinet, government, as well as the right of women to be judges, ambassadors, or having high-level positions in management were gradually accepted. These positive development are historically commendable but before the revolution, Iran was deprived of democracy, independent political parties, independent political organizations, and a free press. Therefore, only those men and women could exercise political power who were close to governmental power circles. Women in parliament and government were involved in government mechanisms instead of advocating official policies. But ordinary women in the country whose voices could not be heard in the absence of independent political parties, free press, and empowered civil society could not be influential and could not explain their approaches, which were of course different from official 
policies. In other words, although women's enjoyment of revolutionary political rights was a promising event, in the absence of democracy and elections and an independent parliament, one cannot say women became an influential political force in the country. Women had gained the right to vote in parliamentary elections and to enter parliament. Women were able to enter the cabinet and occupy some top management positions. Women had the right to be judges. Women enjoyed social freedoms. Women were present and active in society with the right to choose the type of clothing they wished to wear. Women could establish organizations aiming in eliminating gender discrimination or organizations associated with other civic activities, provided that the founders had no history background in criticizing the Shah's official policies. Under the power and protection of government of governmental organization, female lawyers had become a force for demanding the amendment of laws in every possible way and demanding the daily needs of women from legislative bodies. The women of the court, Darbar, were able to establish good relations with the UN, United Nations, and sent delegates to the world assemblies. Women were approaching high-ranking diplomatic positions. Laws were enacted in favor of women in the family and private spheres. Also, women's right to divorce custody of children, increasing the marriage age, and other kinds of rights were accepted. However, there was still no trace of social media. The real space was the only platform for political manoeuvre, and this space was often majorly occupied by men than women because men outnumbered women in politics and decision making. An exception. An important political role that women played at that time with equal power over men was their completely populist role in the Islamic revolution and the collapse of the Shah. This role was played by the networking of the Shah's religious opponents, which ultimately led to the victory of the revolution in 1979. Through the religious populist power, Iranian women turned into a revolution force, but they could only play a small role in changing the Shah's policies, despite the power they gained and their increased representation in the parliament and other political arenas. In the current situation in which Iran is after the revolution, we have entered the fifth decade of the revolution. During this period, the definition of women's power and political influence have changed. This power 
is not only limited to half women from the ruling class of society have participation rights. There is another very important factor at work that we can utilize to measure the extent of women's political power. In today's situation, similar to the pre-revolutionary era, Iranian citizens suffer from a lack of democracy, independent political parties, independent organizations, and a free press. But the global communication revolution has become another possibility for women and men. Therefore, women could make up for shortfalls in management and governance in the Islamic Republic and could liberate and activate their forces in cyberspace through the consideration of their voices each time they become a lever of effective pressure on Iran's authoritarian and religious patriarchal government. Few women have passed through ideological filters and held positions in some important decision-making bodies in the Islamic Republic and are able to do their work within a small number of them. But they do not have the necessarily political power to change or transform government policies and cannot go beyond the ideological boundaries of radical Islam, else they are expelled from the political scene. But social media has allowed large numbers of Iranian women living in Iran and abroad who do not align with government ideologies to become a political force and influential power. For example, in the current year, this force has defined itself with a protest movement against honor killings and hashtag me too movement, which is a protest against the denial of women's right to life on the pretext of honor and sexual harassment of women. In the context of political obstruction of the Islamic Republic of Iran, this force has been able to impose its weight on the mechanisms within the country's political system and force authorities to explain in various ways. Although there has been no change in the narrow religious legislative system of the country regarding honor killings, Iranian women's political force has shown itself uh, to the world in cyberspaces and their protesting voices have been influential. Today, from the heart of this fusion of voices in harmony, so many campaigns are emerging that will undoubtedly play great roles in the future of Iran. Therefore, one cannot limit the political and influential power of women to the extent of their presence in the spheres of government. Unlike the pre-revolutionary era, this force makes good use of social media as a way of becoming levers of pressure, and it will undoubtedly become a capacity that, in a situation where there is a rift in the power 
of the Iranian government, this capacity will be activated and will once again bring about a change in the system of government in Iran. This time, on the wings of social media and not populist movements. Now, we look forward to the future, where women with the capacity that has been built play a significant and leading role in the big political transition, the transition from an Islamic regime to a democratic secular one, a transition that is peaceful and not populist.